Here at the meeting of Davos elites, the biggest topic of conversation is inequality. And a stunning report by Oxfam International, which shows that the rising inequality is the biggest threat to our civilization and growth. Last year, 62 people controlled the same wealth as half of the world's poorest population. But now, the figure is far more stark, only eight. To give that perspective, Winnie Bianama, who is the executive director of Oxfam International, joins me here in Davos. Great to have you on NDTV, Winnie. Thank you. But what a fascinating yet shocking revelation. The elite here in Davos also say that you're perhaps focusing on a narrow interpretation of inequality. What is your response to that? Not at all. We've been coming here every year for the last four years, calling on the business people here, business leaders who lead global companies, global corporations and government leaders and calling on them to tackle rising economic inequality boldly and urgently. Our figures now show that only eight people own as much wealth as 3.6 billion people who are one half of humanity, the bottom half of humanity. This is immoral. It doesn't make economic sense. It doesn't make moral sense to have so much wealth concentrated in the hands of a few people when one out of nine people in the world today go home hungry at night. One out of ten struggle on two dollars a day. It simply doesn't make sense. And we know why. And the leaders here, the business people, the global corporations, the super rich are part of the problem. But governments have the responsibility and have the ability to turn this around, to make a common sense approaches to economic management. And that's what we are calling for. And when you on that note, a ticket here in Davos costs in excess of $70,000, which could feed uh, possibly so many millions of people. But on that note of governments needing to be more responsible, why is there not a sense of panic with these stunning figures and revelations? Why do you think global governments are not panicking? In fact, we are beginning to see governments paying attention because we are already seeing political upheavals or political shocks that reflect the anger of the population at the economic and political exclusion. If you take the recent result of the United States election or the Brexit vote, at least to some extent, it was a result of people showing their anger at a rigged economy that leaves the majority behind. So business leaders, corporations, super rich are part of the problem because what's driving this economic inequality, let's be clear, it's because they are dodging, paying their fair share of taxes, they are racing to the bottom in terms of reducing global corporate tax or corporate taxation, they are not paying living wages to their workers, they are using their money and their connections to make governments make policies that are in their favor. All these things that they are doing are legal and they are legal because they have managed to make governments put them into law. So it's important that governments take up their role. First of all, listen to people and not listen merely to global corporate leaders and their lobbyists. Make laws and policies that work for them. Curb tax dodging, stop this race to the bottom on taxation, legislate for a minimum wage, for decent uh, standards of living, right. close the gap between men and women in wages. These are sensible things that will make the economy work for the majority and not just for the super rich. I want you to specifically focus on India's inequality as well, because $57 billion, as according to your report, uh, really controls 70% of the country's wealth. That's true. India has uh, some of the biggest numbers of poor people. In fact, our data of eight billionaires who control, who own more than half who own as much wealth as half of humanity, 
that figure came down to eight because of recent data that was more accurate showing the levels of poverty in India and in China. That is why the figure from 62 last year is eight this year, because we got better data about levels of poverty here in India and in China. So Which is far more, you were saying, the levels of in poverty in India is far more than it was last year. Absolutely. So it's so important that a country like India that also has some of the richest people in the world. In fact, one of your business leaders earns 400 times more than the average Indian worker. 400 times more. Now, can you tell me that this particular CEO works or is 400 times more talented than an average worker? No. What has happened is that wages have stagnated a long time ago, 30 years ago, B business bosses earned 10, 20 times more than the average worker. Today, as I told you, an Indian CEO earns 400 times more than an average worker. Workers' wages have stagnated, while the super rich have given themselves more and more bi millions of bonuses. And this is causing growing discontent. We are seeing social conflict. We are seeing political shocks. We're seeing a society where there's deep distrust in institutions, in governments, or in businesses. And this is also undermining democracy, because when they get away with so much wealth, they also capture the political process and use it to enrich themselves. So we're talking about rallying business and governments around a vision of a more human economy. But do you think this is the breaking point, Winnie, this year with such startling figures? 2017 could be the year of geopolitical change, which has already been reflected in the rise of Trumpism and Brexit. Uh, the fact that populist movements are now trying to address what they feel are the forgotten. Well, it is time for bold action. This kind of extreme inequality won't be solved by tokenism or small tweaks of the system. It requires big, bold action. For example, it requires that governments tax high incomes, tax the billionaires, so that there is a level ground and so that there are resources that can be plowed into schools, into clinics, into public transportation. We need more clinics and schools, not more yachts and private jets. We need to see governments work together to curb tax dodging. It can't happen. It can't be done by just one government. They need to work together to control and close all these ways, the loopholes that companies use, mm -hmm. super rich use, to avoid paying their taxes. We need to see legislation that guarantees a minimum wage to workers, a living wage to workers. Again, you need to cooperate. India is amongst the countries of Asia, including China, where 10% of the, the top 10% have in 23 years increased their wealth by their share of income by 15% and the top, the bottom 10% have fallen by 15%. That's the gap. You need to do something to raise the average worker's pay and you need to control excessive pay at the top and India can do it too. Growth for all and not just for the 1%. Thank you Absolutely. so much. Absolutely. An economy for all and not for 1%. Thank you so much for speaking to NDTV. Thank you.